Now to tell us about Terrence McNally's play master class, here's Eugenia Zuckerman. Hey, it's nice to see you again, Eugenia. Yeah. Uh, this play is successful, very successful, uh, but I guess maybe that's in a way redundant to, to, to say that because, because he seems successful pretty much all the time. He knows great success, but he also does know failure. Terrence McNally's first play, Things That Go Bump in the Night, on Broadway was, in his words, a complete total flop. But he's had a string of wonderful successes. Two years ago, the Tony for the book of Kiss of the Spider Woman, and last year, the Tony for his play Love, Valor, Compassion. And now Masterclass is a huge hit. But it's hard to imagine that a, that a play about an opera singer giving a giving Masterclass in, in opera singing to somebody, this is successful? It's a huge success because it's about so many things. It's about that, but it's also about the need for art. It's about commitment and integrity and passion. It's also about the deepest love and the most painful loss. To many, Maria Callas was the most exciting opera singer of her time. Called La Divina, her intensely dramatic portrayals on stage were matched off stage in her volatile personal life. The name Maria Callas to this day conjures drama. It was a secret that I was paid more than any of my rivals, which was the newspaper's word for them, not mine. <laughs> As if I had any, how can you have rivals when no one else can do what you can do? <laughs> that drama has found its way back to the stage, to Broadway, where Maria Callas is now the central character in Masterclass a new play written by Tony-winning playwright Terence McNally. I was one of the very few people in the world who thought her voice was beautiful, I, I uh, hasten to add. She was incredibly controversial. Uh, when I came to New York and I went to her debut, she was, uh, and I saw most of her performances in New York, she was booed at every performance. She never got a good review from the New York Times or any of the papers. With Collis, there was a tension. Would she make those top notes? Would people start booing in the middle of an aria? So it wasn't relaxing to go hear Collis. You were like, it's like a war camp. I wanted you all also to hear this aria because this is the classical approach and it is approach also to the other arias, no matter what repertoire you do. In what the early 70s, the Maria Callas taught a series of master classes at the Juilliard here. School in New York. Terence McNally, an ardent fan, attended. Oh, oh. Years later, a chain of events led McNally to suddenly see the format of a master class as a play. Simple, direct, austere, yet highly theatrical. For while it is a class, the process of teaching places teacher and student in front of an audience. At the time of the master classes, Maria Callas had not performed publicly for six years. I know what a real motivation was, was to find out if she could sing again in public. That was her own self-motivation. Uh, uh, the point I'm making, uh, and it's a very simple one, is that art is beauty. In Masterclass, Callas is played by one of the world's leading dramatic actresses, Zoe Caldwell. She wasn't born with the greatest voice God had ever given a human being. It was her will, her musicianship, that brought into life the Callas voice. And it was her relinquishing of the nurturing of the voice that eventually broke it. The play recalls Callas's tempestuous life, from her unhappy childhood, through triumphs on the world's great opera stages, and on to her jet-setting, glamorous, and finally destructive days as the mistress of Aristotle Onassis. 
Near the end of Callas's career, her voice lay perilously close to ruin. She sang all the great, not unlike, uh, very like her own life. She was a high priestess of opera, and Maria Shaw was a high priestess who ultimately gave really everything to Aristotle of Onassis. And that was her life and her voice to give if she chose. So I feel, fine, Maria, you choose to do that. They're yours to give. And then you must take the consequences, and she did. In a 1959 CBS interview with Edward R. Murrow, it was evident that Maria Callas took both her art and herself very seriously. Serious artist is a person that dedicates himself wholly all his life serving art, uh, not uh, serving his own purpose. The big thing you're always told in uh, in vocal school, I've been, I so I've heard, is sing on your interest, not your capital. You know, Kala sang on her capital, and uh, you know I'm a writer that I think is I'm pretty emotional in my writing, and uh, sometimes I worry I'm going to get empty, but I don't. But you know what? I I think that's something. See, that's the bad thing I think they teach you in school. You know. Don't em you know, don't empty the well. Don't go too many times with the bucket because you'll come up empty. I don't believe that. I think the well is unfathomable. A performance is a struggle. You have to win. The audience is the enemy. We have to bring you to your knees because they're right. <laughs> Since you've said that there's so much of you in it, um, do you share her view when she says that the audience is the enemy? Yeah, uh, no, they have to be, uh, they have to be dominated. They have to be brought into this world for the next two, three hours. Kala says, when you sing, you have to make them believe this is the only way this aria can be sung, that yours is the only right voice. Because the artist in that moment gives everything he has at that moment. Mm, his whole being is in this purpose. The least that the public can do is try to understand and appreciate. the audience comes away with? I would hope my, my admiration for Collis as an artist, but all artists, it's, it's not just about Collis. I would like them to come away with that, that what these people do, these artists, and I mean theater artists, and painters, and musicians, and designers, and actors, and directors, what they do matters. It civilizes us. There has to be more life than the noise of the streets, I, I do think. The theater is a, is a holy place. Uh, not a church, but I think it's a special place. And I think we go there to learn about ourselves. <laughs>